Welcome back to Witch Hunt. Today on the trial of Yvonne Abro, uh, we will be talking about inclusive Wicca and what the threefold law actually means. Um, Yvonne is a multiple book author um, on Wicca and witchcraft, so I'm extremely honored. And she's my new friend, actually. So, um, and so I will just, um, for the sake of introductions, have them introduce themselves. So. That was an excellent introduction. Thank you. Um, and I'm really happy to be on your show. It's very exciting uh, and uh, honoured to be counted as a friend. Um, uh, so, yeah, um, I've been practising uh, Wicca since 1991. Uh, I first identified as a pagan in 1985. And uh, actually, when I started, it was like, oh, um, I'm the only one because <laughs> I know I think people still go through that you know until they actually start looking on the internet but yeah um I back then obviously no internet uh and so um I had to find my own way and eventually met some people at university and and because somebody I knew was founding a uh, a cult society uh which was called soul society of occultists at the university of lancaster and um so uh i hung out with them for a bit and then got initiated into wicca in 1991 and that was gardnerian wicca which i still practice to this day um and back then and indeed this is still the case um you can go to a wiccan circle and there may be people trying to tell you that you've got to stand boy girl boy girl um or that uh you know if you're going to do an invocation it has to be a woman invoking a god onto a man or a man invoking a goddess onto a woman um and uh back in those early days uh i've always known that i was non-binary um but we didn't have the word non-binary back then um so when when the when the words like we had the word gender bender so i knew that word and that's the word i would have used back then um it's kind of fallen by the wayside now but um so i knew that I, i've always known that i was non-binary but didn't necessarily always have a word for it so um but anyway there i was sitting there going well i'm bisexual and i'm non-binary uh i could make energy with anyone i don't you know it's not yeah. about what bits you've got right um so uh so i started making noises about this fairly early on in my wiccan career um and uh but i didn't really kind of do anything about it i suppose until um, i started my own group and then um i started saying as the cup is to the inner so the athami is to the outer and then um, uh, it was only much later that um, I started using another form of words, which is as the athame is to the lover, so the cup is to the beloved. And uh, I have a I video like coming that. out very soon, which reveals the full story of um, of the origin of those words. So um, and that is going to be an interview with uh, my friend Crow, uh, which will be on my channel very soon. And um, that gives the full history of how that came about. So I just have to tell you guys, Yvonne also has this amazing series called Queer Magic. And there's just so many beautiful humans. You guys definitely subscribe. I'll put all the information down below. Um, also, so for people that are new and coming in and just tell me, because it's been a long time, like back when I first got started, I did like a deep dive study of Wicca and then, um, but it's been a long time. I'm definitely not the expert, but for people coming in, how would they get like connected to inclusive Wicca and more than just traditional Wicca? How do they right. find that? Sure. Okay. Well, I have a website. Um which is www.inclusivewicca.org um, and uh, people can look on there for more information. Uh, also have um, 
three books on the subject now. So uh, the first one was All Acts of Love and Pleasure, Inclusive Wicker. Um, the second one, um, Dark Mirror, The Inner Work of Witchcraft. And the third one is The Night Journey, Witchcraft as Transformation. Uh, so the last two were originally going to be a single book. And then I realised I'd written two books. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, but they're definitely aimed at which is uh, you know people that you don't have to be a Wiccan to enjoy them they are definitely aimed at witches in general um, I mean obviously yeah having been a Wiccan for 30 years nearly 30 years now uh, in fact yeah we're coming up to the 30th anniversary of my initiation um, spring equinox do you uh, do anything like for that do you to like commemorate that or honor that um well I feel like you know if we weren't in the middle of a pandemic I think I'd be having a party <laughs> um, yes that's understandable <laughs> yes um I'm definitely going to do something we should um, have oh I'm not Wic I just invited myself did you hear that oh my gosh uh, I'm not Wiccan but I was like we should have a zoom party oh yeah gosh. that's a great idea yeah we cool um <laughs> so yeah um and uh funny story i was an hour late because the clocks had gone back oh. and so we showed up uh, i was actually getting initiated at the same time as someone else and we showed up what we thought was absolutely bang on seven o'clock as instructed and the the rest of the coven like opened the door and went where have you been and we're like but we're bang on time <laughs> no you're an hour late ah oh my gosh oh. they still initiated us which was kind well that's <laughs> good yes <laughs> okay we obviously we, i mean you could tell by the shock on our faces that you yeah know, we really really did think it was that it was seven o'clock <laughs> oh uh, yeah I'm, I'm one of those people who just late for everything i mean me too <laughs> Yeah, I'm just, yeah, I was probably, I'm surprised I wasn't late for this. And it's in my own basement, so I have no reason to <laughs> yes. be late. But that's just, yeah, that's definitely how it goes. Um, yes. Well, I was panicking about the fact that we're in two different time zones, right? I mean, oh yeah. Um, yeah. So um, the other way that people can find, if people are actually looking for a coven, um, there's a great website called Mandragora Magica. Um, and they have like, people can put their coven advert on there um, and it's all organized by country and if you're in the US it's organized by state and if you're in Canada it's organized by by province so it's really narrow it down um, and I actually put out a call the other day to say to people hey guys if you have an inclusive coven mention it in your advert that's amazing otherwise how will people know yeah well exactly yeah, yeah. and yes. te technology like and you and I have spoke about this before about how like especially like when I was young well you didn't have anything when I was young I had the computer that was like Oregon Trail floppy disk a if my mom was on the phone I couldn't use the computer <laughs> and Style up, bro. Yeah. yeah it's yeah it's, I like it would have to call the internet for you know 30 minutes before I could do anything and there just wasn't that's amazing so there's actually a place online that you can go to find connect with other covens in your area that's really yes. cool yeah, and there's also uh, on Facebook, there's a group called Gardnerian Wicca Seekers and Initiates. Um, and there's a similar one for Alexandrians. And also I have a group, I, I'm not on Facebook anymore, but I started a group and it's still going uh, called the Inclusive Wicca Discussion Group. So um, people can get in contact um, with other inclusive groups through that as well. Um, and I have a Discord group as well. So, um, okay. yeah, so we have multiple, you know, if you don't do Facebook, we have a Discord group and that's absolutely open to anyone who's interested. Um, so, yeah, so the impetus behind Inclusive Wicca was, um, well, the first thing was, hey, we should make Wicca accessible to disabled people because um, I... Um, that was that was one thing and then the other thing was we should make wicca inclusive of lgbt plus people um and what's been really interesting is that since i sort of brought came out 
brought out the book, uh, All Acts of Love and Pleasure. Um, there's been, um, I think there was already a debate going on, to be fair, um, but more people have kind of gone, oh, yeah, we need to be more inclusive. <laughs> um, and, you know, a group of us went off and had a discussion to sort of formulate a better like more of a model of being inclusive um and uh i also have to admit that when i wrote all acts of love and pleasure i was like well and i was really naive and i thought that there was nothing in wicca itself that structurally excluded people of color uh and and it's true there's nothing in actual wicca that excludes people of color um, but obviously the fact that it is overwhelmingly kind of white um, suggests that there's something going on that that does exclude people of colour. Um, I mean, partly because it is in almost inevitably Eurocentric. Um, yeah. I think that comes into it. But, um, but also because clueless white people wander around go saying things like, oh, you're black that means you must like the orishas or yeah. or how have you considered the egyptian pantheon or whatever you know that kind of stuff um and um and obviously there are lots of people of color are just gonna go bye i'm off <laughs> <laughs> so um um but uh, you know obviously the there's lots of people who are like but well, we want to be welcoming and we want to not be clueless but but uh you know yeah um, so and 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 there are lots of people you know if there's uh other clueless or formerly clueless white people out there they should all read Layla um Layla F I oh, can't remember the last name her last name now um the how not to be racist um oh. that one yeah <laughs> um I did put some anti-racism stuff in the night journey as well um but i don't actually know how good it is um because you know obviously i um not on the receiving end of racism so uh or at least very very rarely uh, <laughs> uh it has happened to me once um because somebody was making obnoxious comments about the roma the um the romany people uh in my presence because they thought i was one um oh yeah uh so yeah but other than that i've generally not been on the oh and i've also been um i've also had people making obnoxious comments about jewish people in my presence because they thought i was jewish uh but that's about it so did you watch obviously. the this is like a total side thing but they just did um speaking about like jewish backgrounds um who was it is it lavender moon and mystic sunchild that just had right. like an amazing conversation about that and um about the stuff that they faced and the stuff that they meet being jewish and spirituality that i just didn't even i just didn't know you know and you don't know i mean that's how you learn and yeah, yeah. so it just i don't know but yes thank you for all the work that you're doing and and, and the information and it's just it's always that one drop that creates a ripple that turns into the tidal wave that is changed you know so it's just yeah. it's important it seems to be and and um i mean also i was you know big shout out for crystal blanton who um has done a lot of work on the um people of color and wicca area um she's um she's written three or four books and edited an anthology and you know really good stuff uh so full kudos to her yeah definitely um and there's becoming more and more um not only with wicca but with all different things for there's just more like we've talked about um the queering the tarot and um the what is it what was the other one Queering your craft as well. Outside, yeah. yeah Queering the craft and outside the circle. So, yeah, there's getting to be more and more information, which is really nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it was kind of weird when I published, because um, uh, we're now on the second edition of Dark Mirror, and um, I trailed it around a number of different publishers, and they were, they just like didn't kind of seem to get what I was on about. <laughs> 
um and now suddenly so this was in i finished it in 2016 um and it took four years to get the damn thing published so um so kudos to uh the joy and valiente foundation for you know taking a flyer on it um but it has you know um it predates a lot of this other stuff and and it's it was really frustrating because it's like okay i'm trying to write something that uh that encompasses um, LGBT, um, BIPOC, disabled, um, all those people who are marginalized, potentially marginalized, um, but also talking about how, you know, the inner work is important and, and that part of the inner work is deconstructing the white supremacy or another bullshit that you carry around with you. Um, and like different editors read it and kind of went, this is a book for beginners. And I'm like, no, the first part is for big, is for everybody. Cause it's like, when you're learning a language, you have to keep going back and revisiting the basics to yeah, get them the in a more in-depth, yeah, in a more in-depth way. So what I was trying to do was say, right, okay, when you're doing casting a circle, you know, you're not just waving your arms around and, um, and shouting at the quarters you know it's like there's an inner process where you're connecting from within you to the the element or the deity or whatever it is um and uh i mean maybe that's obvious to some people but you know it's like um so it it works on a beginner level and a, a more advanced level as well um because if Which you're I a think- beginner it will set you off on the right the right way to do it and if you if you're not a beginner and uh, but you're one of those people who goes around kind of just saying the words but not not feeling it in here yes. then it caters for that as well well and i think that that's so important not only for for beginners um that are wondering why things aren't working or connecting like the way that they want them to but also for even more advanced practitioners i know for myself um i just i have like a busy mind and so i have to really check myself that when i'm connecting that i'm actually like here i'm centered i'm focused i'm connected my energies are aligned and i'm not thinking oh like oh did i did i leave the tea kettle on like you know what i mean just yes. because then i'm like why didn't that work <laughs> you know and yeah it's just yeah it's really important yeah you're not out waving your arms around yeah <laughs> yeah i mean i the idea the idea of it actually came to me because i went to a ritual and there were some people kind of shouting at the quarters <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and I was like they're not making a magical connection with the quarter are they mm. <laughs> so, so that was the impetus behind the whole thing um <laughs> I love that mug by the way it's really good oh thank you I just got this little guy it's great it's got and shrooms. he's got a great big moon on this side oh yeah gorgeous Love it. <laughs> um, so is there any daily rituals um, that you do or just daily magic things? How do you, um, what's it look like for you? Okay, well, I've been through various phases of trying to establish a daily practice. Um, there was that six months when I did the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram every day. Um, it's like having your psyche scraped out with a rusty teaspoon. Um, <laughs> uh i've done poetry writing poetry every day that was one thing i'm trying to establish a drawing a tarot card and a rune every day practice at the moment um i've done lectio divina i've done um i've done a really great practice by there was this um uh progressive rabbi called um merle well, um, the, anyway, the practice is called Right for Your Life, and I seem to be terrible with last names today. <laughs> so, so I did that for a while as well, uh, and I need to get back to doing that because it was really good. Um, but the idea is that you you write. A, she's got a series of writing prompts, and then you write something um, about your day based on one of these writing prompts, and then you write a little prayer to sum up how you feel about it and communicate with deities on the basis of it so wow yeah it's That's nice really neat. 
yeah, it's really good. Um, and yeah, the Lectio Divina one was fun, which is where you um, you get um, you get a poem that you like, and then you you reflect on the poem and sort of think, okay, what are the what's the key concept or word that's leaping out for me here? Uh, so you know, it might be love, right? And then you meditate on the word that's leapt out at you, um, or the or the line from the poem that leapt out at you, whichever it is. Um, and then you kind of go into a wordless communion with the divine. And then from that process, you then produce a poem that's a reflection on the first poem. Oh my gosh. Just thinking about that is like, I just, I'm just now realizing, I don't know why I didn't realize this the last time we talked, but like, and we, uh, we've talked to you guys before about not, you don't have to subscribe to labels or take any labels that anyone gives you. Um, but you're you're a word witch. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is very true. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. yeah I'm yeah. like okay, six books later, I just realized that you're a word witch. But just no, just I wouldn't have ever thought about incorporating poetry into my daily magic. And that sounds really beautiful. Um I don't know if I could write my own. That just seems very intimidating, but I like the I like the pulling the words out. I do a little bit of bibliomancy myself and I like to, you know, pull words out and stuff like that. It's really beautiful. Yeah. Well, um, so it's basically, um, I uh, stole it from a Christian practice. Um, so Lectio, what the, the Christians did is they, they had a Bible verse and they meditated on the Bible verse and then they wrote, and then they did that meditative process and then they produced a poem at the end um so i just took out the bible and put like poem <laughs> instead um that's amazing usually that's going the other way with christianity well yeah taking like, from <laughs> i'm like the christians don't need it like, <laughs> so uh um yeah i didn't really feel it was cultural appropriation because they're the most powerful kid in the playground anyway yeah. so i'm gonna yeah. steal their stuff out of their back pocket um <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah it's actually a really good practice and um i mean the thing that's lovely about it is you know you don't have to show the poems that you write to anyone else and yeah. practice makes perfect that's true yeah, yeah i have to get i have to get out of my own head sometimes you know um and it's like especially with magic it's just it's creating from this place that's authentically you and no one else has to see it and then you're not trying to be like anyone else or meet some kind of standard it's just what's there it's just you you know yeah. so yeah well when when you i mean if you extemporize in the circle like when you're talking to your gods um then you're making poetry you know that's poetry oh that's so amazing so okay for people that are new do you have anything to speak on as far because i don't i'm just out here talking to plants and bees um, so I don't work with any of the gods or goddesses or deities. Do you have any advice or who do you work with or how would someone get started? Mm, um, well, I think, I mean, if you were starting from absolute scratch, um, there's two ways you could go. Uh, and it depends on your inclinations. So if you really like stories and mythology, then I would get you know, there's some really excellent interpretations of mythology available now. Like um, there's Celtic mythology interpretations as like Neil Gaiman has written uh, Norse mythology recently. So that's a good one. Um, and, you know, actually children's books, right? There are children's books with mythology in. Um, <laughs> so uh, get a hold of those and read them and see which of those stories speak to you. That would be the first step. And then once you've done that, um, I mean, some people are lucky and just get deities popping up and yeah. speaking to them, but this is um, kind of rare, you know, it doesn't happen to everyone. And some of us have to go around and go about it the hard way. Um, and so once you've done that and you've found a deity that, that their story resonates with you, then, you know, start um look online to if you if you're not into writing poems or prayers or whatever um look online to see if you can find anything for that person 
of that deity um, and then just start talking to them. You know, it doesn't have to be in highfalutin fancy prayers or whatever, right? Um, and then the other way, if you're more of a um, bees and flowers kind of person, um, is I would go to special places in the landscape um, that are special to you uh, and maybe have been special to previous generations of people as well um and just start communing with the the nature spirits and what have you that are there um because uh i mean obviously that's in north america that can be problematic um for those of us who are of uh you know not indigenous background um so you know don't bring wiccan or non indigenous ceremony into an indigenous sacred place because that's yeah. deeply unrespectful um i had a really interesting experience which was that i, I went to the um uh mississaugas of the new credit three fires homecoming powwow and um they they have a, a sacred practice which is that they have these three fires and they have a firekeeper who tends the fires the whole weekend of the powwow. And then anybody can go and pay their respects at the fire, right? So um, so we showed up and um, obviously spoke to the firekeeper and said, is it okay that we're here? And he's like, yes, yes, you're absolutely welcome. And, um, and then he showed us how to smudge because we um, had no idea. Uh, and then um, gave us some cedar and sweet grass and we went round and put the offerings on the fires uh, and the interesting thing was that I was absolutely convinced that after I'd done that there was a whole group of spirits that could see me that couldn't see me before that that I did that um, I mean that I still don't think that necessarily gives me the right to approach them or whatever uh, but it was really interesting that I did that and suddenly this like there was a little sort of recognition kind of thing yeah um that's really beautiful mm. and um yes so anyway when you're going out to when you're going out into nature in North America um then it's all about talk to the local spirits uh see if anything answers I mean I, d I tend to find that rivers um the rivers will talk to you yeah um and the animal spirits um um but yeah like you know we can't necessarily assume that everything that's out there is going to talk to us um yeah but it's uh doesn't you know it's I don't think it's disrespectful to try it's I think it's yeah. it would be to try and take it would be deeply disrespectful to try and take indigenous ceremony to try and do that yeah. um but doing it in your own words in your own way i think that's yeah that's okay um i'm gonna start with the children's book i'm so excited <laughs> yeah that's very cool um so yeah and i think um i love the whole thing of just like there's a great uh druid a blogger called Alison Lee Lilly and she talks about um gods of gods of mountains gods of mist and it's this idea that the gods are because they're imminent in nature that they are everywhere and in everything and that you that their natures can shift and change as well that's really beautiful yeah yeah I like Gosh. that yes um Okay, so what else was I going to ask while I have you here? Oh, this is, I was, if you would please tell us <laughs> the actual meaning of the threefold law. I can certainly do that. Yes. Right, so the original threefold law uh, was... Um, and uh, the reason I say this is because it's very commonly misused and then almost always like on in the comment section online where you find people arguing it is misquoted. And so, oh, yeah. yeah, so, <laughs> yes. yeah, you right. go ahead. <laughs> so, yeah, so basically the, a lot of people think that the threefold law is um, 
what you send out, you will get back threefold. Um, and that version of it seems to have been started by Monique Wilson, who was one of Gardner's initiates who came to North America. Um, the original version as promulgated by Gerald Gardner was um, when you receive good, give good back threefold. So it's not saying, um, you know, you just sit there and wait for karmic, wait for the karmic shit to drop on you. <laughs> it's you received some good, give it back threefold, actively do something. Yeah. Um, I mean, the one thing that the, the, there's a good interpretation of the, um, of the other, the, the karmic version uh, that's basically saying, um, if I send something out, I'm going to get it back on the psychic level, the spiritual level, um, the mental level, the spiritual level and the physical level. So that's the threefold. That's one way you could interpret it as being threefold because it doesn't necessarily mean three times as powerful, obviously. Um, yes. So many people don't know that. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. and you have a great video on that. I'm also going to put that video down below because That's I've cool. been sharing that every group that I'm in, I'm like, I'm going to leave this here. I'm going to leave this in this comment. I'm not going to argue with you, but I'm going to leave this here. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I also, um, my, my new one, um, about the Wiccan read uh came out this morning as well and that's okay. the other one that's the other thing that people get wrong a lot uh because people think either they think the wick and read is harm none or they think it's a very long poem that was written in the 1970s um no the wick and read is and it harm none do what thou wilt meaning if it harms no one you can do what you want but the thing is pretty much every action that you might do in life has some harmful consequence so what it's actually saying is you can't actually just do what you want you have to think about the consequences of every action yeah yep which is so, all of that everything from start to finish right there makes so much more sense than I, when yeah when I see the other stuff, I'm like, this doesn't, how did you get here? <laughs> yes. Like all these people going, um, like, I mean, part of it is because it's couched in um, archaic language, right? So people think that and means and or something. Um, I mean, um, I saw a thing in a book um, that was saying uh, that the author seemed to think that it was about putting and it harm none at the end of a spell to make sure that the spell didn't actually harm anyone and it's like no there's nothing about that in wicca at all it, like um people do sometimes at the end of a spell say may it be for the good of all or something yeah. to make sure that they're not I've asking for that, something yeah. unethical yeah but like i've never heard of anyone actually saying and it harm none at the end of a spell um how am i going to hex the patriarchy if i have to say that at the end <laughs> Well, yes, and that was the very valid point that the person was making. Because, <laughs> um, you know, obviously hexing the patriarchy is a good idea. Yeah. Um, uh, but I think, um, yeah, I, there's nothing about that in in Gardnerian Wicca anyway. I don't know about other flavours of Wicca, but not in Gardnerian Wicca. Okay. Um, yeah, and yeah. <laughs> uh, hexing the patriarchy is a good thing yeah if we got to take that off the list i've lost my tuesday nights i don't know what i'm gonna yeah. do with my time <laughs> yeah oh, there's quite a few other oppressive systems to yeah to, uh, that's true to hex yeah there's more work to be done <laughs> definitely yeah um thank you so much um you've already given us lots of information and i will make sure that i put um all of your information down below and the names of your books but is there anything other any other learning resources that you would like to offer people or anything that really helps you on your path yeah um yes. i think uh you know the thing that's really helped me um recently has been um the work of people writing about white supremacy and and what i've total toxic disaster area that is um so kudos to them especially crystal blanton and um chelsea vowell who is um an awesome indigenous writer from canada uh who wrote a great book called indigenous rights okay um highly recommended uh and 
on a magical level. Um, I've really enjoyed some of the stuff coming out of the sort of landscape and traditional witchcraft side of the house, um, particularly a guy called Giles Watson, who has a lovely book called um, uh, which is a witch is natural history. That's very good. Uh, and another guy called Barry Patterson, who wrote this brilliant book called The Art of Conversation with the Genius Loci. Which I've never I love. heard of that one. Yeah, yeah, not many people have, but it's a really, really good book. Um, and it talks about entering into a relationship with the land and like one of the visualizations, and this is something it's got in common with the witch's natural history, which is they both have this these type of visualizations where you one of them is in Giles Watson has one about imagining that you're a caddis fly larvae that's going to hatch out and come above the water and like be a caddis fly. Um, and the one in um, Barry Patterson is about imagining that you're a mouse and seeing everything from the perspective of a mouse. Um, and it just gives you a completely other than human perspective on the world. Uh, so it's great. Wow. Yeah, that's a huge shift to like, just when you said that, I was just like, all of a sudden, like, at first I was picturing water, and then you said mouse, and it's like my whole, like, it all shifted as I was like, picturing. That's, I will have to look that up. Yeah. That's really neat. So like the mouse is down on the ground, yeah. seeing, seeing the great big tree trunks walking around. <laughs> it's really good. Oh, that's really neat. Yeah, because oh yeah, everything's connected and that's really cool. Um, is there is there anything that you want to share with us today? Uh, so I wish I had a, a bon mot of like wisdom. Oh, I know. I, I'll tell you my, my one piece of advice that I ever give out to people. And that is um, do the thing you want to do, not the thing you think you ought to do. That's beautiful. Perfect. That's amazing. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us for another episode of Witch Hunt. We will be back again. Um, I will put all of Yvonne's information down below and yeah, Inclusive Wicca, definitely check it out and continue to do the work, you guys. It's important. So um, thank you for joining us. And thank you very much for having me. It was yeah. great. <laughs> and we will see you guys back for another episode. Bye.